Of all the problems associated with climate change, sea level rise will have the most immediate impact. And forecasts for this rise range from one and a half feet to five feet in the next 30 years. And houses like this one on Cape Cod have already paid the price. But let's look at the problem closer to home. Plum Island is a nine-mile-long barrier beach island that protects the towns of Newbury, Newburyport, Rowley, and Ipswich. Many of these towns have substantial homes, but a barrier beach needs to be able to move, flex, and pulsate in order to stay healthy. These photographs show that what coastal geologists call longshore currents carry sand from the center of Plum Island north to the Merrimack River and south towards Ipswich. As long as these currents can flow uninterrupted, the island's beaches will stay wide and slow down erosion. But when you build a rigid structure, like a groin, jetty, or seawall, you actually increase the rate of erosion. In this footage, you can see that sand flows north along this section of the beach, and the groin is acting like a dam, holding back sand in the background, but starving the beach in the foreground. Since 2008, Ten houses have been lost, seven condemned for several months, one moved back, and 24 declared in imminent danger. All of the ten houses that were lost were immediately downstream of the groins. Coastal geology tells us that these 40 front-line houses may continue to wash away at the rate of one or two per year for the next 20 years. Now this is the Merrimack River South Jetty. It was designed to keep the mouth of the river stable but it also acts like a groin. The jetty was repaired in 2014, and now it too acts like a dam holding back a 50-foot high prism of sand from flowing through the jetty to build up North Point. These are the remains of the road that trucks use to repair the jetty. All the land to the west of the spur of the jetty eroded back 30 to 50 feet between December 2014 and April 2015. So this is what the point looked like before the repair, and this is what it looked like after the repair. The area lost over a football field worth of beach in just four short months. At this rate, waves could be lapping at the houses on Northern Reservation Terrace by 2016 and be a severe problem by 2017 and on. In 2012, homeowners scraped sand off the beach to make a four-story high artificial dune to protect their homes from Hurricane Sandy. The entire dune was washed away during the next high tide cycle, leaving these stairs dangling in the air 40 feet above the beach. In 2013, homeowners built this seawall over the state's objections. The wall failed and had to be rebuilt in 2013, 2014, and 2015 but seawalls do not fail in a single storm. The seawall looked stable in November 2014, but waves scoured out a hidden cavity behind the wall. A few days later, the sand slumped into the cavity, leaving behind these telltale fissures. Then the blizzards of 2015 started to rage, and the seawall slumped into the cavity, exposing foundations to the full force of the Atlantic Ocean. In April, more boulders were added and sand was scraped off the public beach to cover the repairs. This caused waves to reflect off the seawall, scouring away so much sand that people can no longer walk along this section of the beach during high tides, and swimmers have to contend with sharp, dangerous boulders strewn on the beach below low water. But our future does not have to look this way. If we do things like alter the groins, pump in sand, and rebuild dunes, we can expect the beach to widen by 60 to 100 feet, like the beaches to the north and to the south of the active groin field. If we provide desirable beach facilities, tax revenues that could be lost if these houses wash away can be recouped by parking fees and beach stickers. We will have returned the island back to the welcoming beach community it once was, with wide beaches, good swimming, surfing, and fishing, and some of the best views of the Atlantic Ocean in all of New England.